Hey, Lori, how's it going? Hey, Chris. Can you uh, introduce us to your helpers here? Absolutely. We have a couple students from Haviland Middle School in Hyde Park. We've got Claire here and Francis. Fantastic. So I think you guys are going to talk to us about uh, food webs. Absolutely. Sounds great. Well, we're all part of a food web. Everything that's alive on the planet is part of a food web, humans included. Humans eat things like plants, you know, things from plants, french fries, potatoes, carrots, things like that, as well as animal, animal products, hamburgers, chicken, stuff like that. We are mostly part of the top of the food chain. Nothing really eats us anymore, thankfully, unless you count mosquito bites. But a lot of animals, most animals both eat other things and are eaten by things. Now we're going to use Claire and Francis here to help us model a simple part of the food web of the Hudson River estuary, a pretty simple food chain, okay? So we've got our first tank right over here. And it Wow, it doesn't what, that <laughs> looks like a lot of muck in there. <laughs> Well, it may look like just a lot of muck, but this is some of that good, rich Hudson River water that you were talking about. And it may look just like mucky water, but what we have in here is some detritus, a bunch of decaying bits of plants, leaves and twigs and bark and grass and things like that. We've also got in here, I know you can't see it in the water without a microscope, but we've got a lot of microscopic bacteria. We've got a lot of slightly larger but still tiny things like phytoplankton, uh, diatoms and algae, little tiny things that photosynthesize just like land plants but are very very small. Mm -hmm. And then we have not a rock but we have some zooplankton. Oh, look at that. Wow. What are those little guys? Those are mostly amphipods. Okay. Mostly amphipods. Now that um, that's that's a type of crustacean, right? Like a shrimp or a crab. Right. As opposed right. to an insect. Let's right. Say. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And these little guys scurry around in the water, and they eat things like the detritus that we were just talking about. How do those feel in your hand? They are very tickly. <laughs> very tickly. They look cute. <laughs> yeah, they're actually what, very cool. Uh, what eats these guys? What it's these guys? Well, that's a great question. We're gonna oh, we're gonna take a look hello. at that right here. Thanks a lot, Francis. In this tank, we have mostly spot tail shiners. Uh, there's a lot of these, but there's there's a lot fewer of the spot tail shiners and these kind of small fish in the river than there are things like zooplankton, and that's because. There, it takes a whole lot of the zooplankton to feed each of these each of these small fish. And then we have yes. Dun, da, da, dun. Oh, look at that beautiful fish! Look at this big guy. This is Albert. He's a pumpkin seed sunfish, and <clears throat> he's certainly not the biggest fish in the river by any means. But what do you think Albert might eat? The little fish. Those little fish there? Yeah, actually, mm. he, he probably would eat fish like that. <clears throat> as well as a bunch of larval insects and worms. And we're actually going to see if Albert's hungry. Okay, we're going we're gonna to see if he wants to eat. Oh, oh, oh my oh, goodness! Oh, oh geez! My goodness. Holy oh, cow! Oh, oh did you Albert. see that? He ate a glass eel, and the glass eel slipped out of his gill. <laughs> it actually escaped. Way to go, survival eels. I love that. That is fantastic. Well, oh my gosh, Lori, this has well, been Albert great. Albert is hungry, but uh, it looks like those eels are just way too slippery for him today. Oh my goodness gracious, that was cool. Lori, thanks so a lot for Hudson that. That's River food chain. That was beautiful.